so let's get started on this end. So an overview of the roles and responsibilities, I'm trying to get my screen clear, of a communication secretary. So what does the communication secretary do? When I took on this role originally in my home church in El Shaddai, um, it seemed like all I needed to do was make sure we had attractive announcements during the 10 minute period. But if you look closer into the role of the communication secretary and the communications department, there's actually the section within our church that is connecting us directly with our community. So of course, the role of the communication secretary, they serve as the head of the communications department in those instances where you have a formal department. Um, in my case, it is myself and an elder who works with communications for El Shaddai. And we try and bring in other members as we see necessary to perform different activities. So the communication secretary works with the local pastor and all the church leaders to ensure clear and effective messaging is sent to the church members and the community at large. So as a communications secretary, you're actually creating two different types of messaging. You're creating messaging that will inspire your church members to be of service and participate in your church activities. And you're also creating messaging that will attract your community to come in and fellowship with your home church. And that's important when we're thinking about the kind of images we're pushing out, the kind of messaging that we're sharing. We keep the membership accurately informed on local, national, and international church activities, initiatives, and programs. So as part of this network, you as a communication secretary also have a responsibility to be in contact with your local mission, and then also with the union, and then through the union to have connection with whatever international activities, international days, initiatives that are coming together. And what does this does is that it connects our entire body, our entire faith-based organization as one unit moving throughout the country. So it creates that network of communication. It creates a sense of identity, fellowship. If we're all on the same page, working towards the same goals. And we also have, as Ms. Ellen highlighted just now, the responsibility of having the church properly represented in the public. We, as the communications secretary, as the head of the communications department, you are responsible for the public image of your church, not only in your community, but also nationally. So what does your church Facebook page look like? What does the flyers that you're churches putting out there look like? What are the messages that we're posting through our uh, media locally look like? So here are some of the qualities that we should look for for your communication secretary. First of all, your communication secretary needs to be an active member of your church. And when I say active member of your church, it can't just be a member who comes only to Sabbath service. It has to be an active member who is participating in all of the outreach activities because as a communication secretary, you're also capturing videos, you're capturing photos, you're putting together information for um, news items that can be circulated to your mission, through your social media page, to your membership, your end of year report for um, your church services. So you need to be a member or have members on your team that will be able to participate in all church activities. There shouldn't be a church activity taking place and there is no communication member there to be a part of that activity. The communication secretary needs to have a discerning eye, very good judgment of when it comes to creating, publishing and sharing information, be able to create attractive information stories and facts and be able to edit and present clear materials. Also very important is that the communication secretary needs to know what information can be shared publicly and what information is it best for us to hold back from sharing. Not everything that happens needs to be in the public eye. So there has to be a very careful look at how we are presenting information. Communication secretary is organized, plan ahead, 
And planning ahead is crucial. It's one of the challenges that we do have. Sometimes we find out that an activity will take place in a week's time and they tell you on Sunday that the activity is on Sabbath and they need a flyer and then you need to get it out and get it published. It doesn't work well for communications. So when you're building um, advertising campaigns, trying to get information out to your um, congregation and the community, it works much better if you can plan ahead. And this is where it becomes important for us as communication secretary to work along with the church board and the other heads of departments to be able to have a structured calendar of what is happening and then be able to plan according to that. Not to say that things won't change, that sometimes things happen that are beyond your control. The church has been planning an event for a month and then the weather changes and, and several things have to change because there was an unexpected change. So that does happen. Um, and then the communication secretary, there is an established form or forms of communication with members. How are you communicating with your members? And I have a slide a little bit further down that we're going to talk about. And then willingness. You have to have a willingness to carry out your assigned tasks willingness to be engaged in ongoing learning and skills development. And this is actually one of these posts in the church where there is going to be a constant need for growing and learning. One of the things that I am writing or I'm working on learning right now is how to write effectively for virtual or online publications. Because I write regularly, I'm a creative writer, but the language, the style, the way you need to cut down your content is completely different for publishing online. So that's something that I have to go back and learn. Uh, being in the role of communication secretary, I had to learn how to use the OBS streaming system when we started working with online services. I had to learn how to schedule posts on Facebook this week for a separate initiative that I'm doing. There was a challenge and I posted the wrong flyer across three platforms. And I had to go back and take those down and repost. And that was a learning experience. So you have to be able to find yourself in a position where you are willing to learn because the technology changes constantly, the communication format changes constantly. But also as you get to know your congregation, you get to know the people who are you communicating with, you need to learn the techniques that work best for them. If there are any questions, please feel free, place them in the chat. And as um, Sister Ellen said at the end, we're going to do our very best to answer all of those um, questions. I also have a handout for this um, presentation that I will be sending to Nin. And if you have registered and are a part of the uh, database, there was a link in the chat for registration you'll be getting an email copy of this information. So what are some of the skills and abilities that we're looking for when we talk about a communication secretary? Well, the person needs to have a good command of English or Spanish, whichever is the language that they're communicating towards their public in. So a good command of the language, um, basic knowledge of how to use social media. So you don't have to be a social media expert, but you definitely need to know the ins and the outs. What are the basic things? And there are online tutorials, short videos that you can brush up on your knowledge. That's something that I have to do from time to time. Basic knowledge for online streaming and looking at what it might mean to stream on Facebook, stream on YouTube, stream using StreamYard, stream using the OBS system. And I know if you are not technologically savvy, all of these things might sound very obscure, but this is also one of the important reasons for you to be a part of the ongoing training because we're going to be building your capacity to use these um, technologies for your work. Have some basic graphic design background or skills. And I can honestly tell you guys that I am not good at graphic design. God has blessed me with many, many talents, but graphic design is not one. And that's where using a free service like Canva that I'm using today, comes in very handy. There are presets, there are different things that you can use and work with. There are tutorials. So once again, that willingness to learn comes in handy. Some basic filming and editing um, experience. And really and truly when we talk about that, it's more, how do you take that cell phone in your hand, turn it over, collect a great film clip with good audio so you can use it. So you're not really looking at you to be an expert, 
but to have enough skill that what you are collecting, the information that you're collecting is clear, the sound quality is good. You can use it in your local church. You can send it to the mission to be used at the, on, in the mission field. The mission can send it to the union to be used on the national level. So how do you use the tools that you already have in your hand to the best ability, uh, to the best of your ability? And then of course, your ability to meet deadlines and targets. And that comes again with being organized and structured and having a working calendar. What is the focus of your church this quarter? What are the things that you're expected to produce as a team? And when do you need to have them produce? Work well under pressure. Um, unfortunately, that comes along with the job. Because what I found out is that when I started to do announcements for church, that was one thing. But then when we started to live stream during the pandemic, that was a completely different thing. And what happens when your audio goes down? What happens when the computer stops working? What happens when they change the program in the morning because people were unable to show up? How are you able to work along in that circle? And then, of course, the eight is to be able to give and receive criticism. Communications is a crucial department. We are really and truly kind of the glue that holds together so many of the different components of the um, of the church, of the activities that are taking place. So sometimes you, we might need to get a little bit of advice on how to do something better. And sometimes we need to give some criticism. Sometimes persons are asking you to produce communication materials that won't be effective for what they're trying to do. So being able to have that open communication and dialogue, those are very important parts of the skill sets and abilities that you will need. So roles and responsibilities. There are four main roles and responsibilities that you will have as the communication secretary. The first one is documenting activities. So that's creating your news items, putting together reports, um, ensuring that the, the material that you have developed is according to the Adventist News Network style guide. Uh, we do have copies of that style guide that can be shared digitally and that you maintain and ensure proper storage and safekeeping of the church's communications equipment, whatever those may look like. Um, the second one is you keep in contact with your members. So along with your church clerk, you should be able to create and maintain an ad accurate contact list for your local church members. And then have maintain the, the local church's social media presence through the creation of social media posts and the management of social media pages. It was very funny, um, about a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Nina about something and he asked me, if I wanted to cross posts on my church's social media page. And I had been thinking all this time that I was the admin of the El Shaddai Facebook page. And I come to find out that I'm not because I wasn't the person who set up the page. I only have posting authority. So it's been taking, it's taking me a little longer than I anticipated to find out how, who has the actual admin and to get back the admin. So these are things that we need to look at when we are creating our social media pages because this really controls how we are able to contact the community, our members, persons who might be following the page. Um, and then communicate key messages to the membership throughout the week, depending on what kind of programming the uh, church is having. We also assist the local church departments in planning and promotion of their activities and you assist the church clerk in posting messages to the church bulletin board. And then your responsibility to the local mission and union. First of all, if you haven't done, I'm gonna ask you at the end of this um, session, and if Nin can post up the links in the chat, is to go like, follow all the official mission, uh, union mission social media pages from your personal account, and from your church account if your church already has one so that you can be up to date with the information that they are sharing you maintain a close working relationship with your mission communications officer and that's so that you can get the necessary information from them but also feeding information about activities that your local church might be doing and submitting stories of interest um, 
and activities from your local church to be published. And then we maintain a link to the community. And that is by creating current um, contact lists for all the local media houses. You hold basic sensitization sessions with members to utilize communication tools to create digital missionaries. How can your membership use their WhatsApp to the maximum function? How can they use their Facebook to promote different activities that they're taking along? And then of course, with the church, maintain and manage the church calendar of activities. Once that's been established, I've been on several church boards and I know how difficult managing calendars can be from time to time. So Nin has already posted up those channels in our chat. So before you leave the meeting, please go ahead and do it. So I've given you a lot of things, roles, responsibilities, skill sets, all of these things. So how do we actually do this effectively as communication secretaries? Well, first of all, I love planning. I believe in planning and executing plans because they set me up to have success. So this is our first quarter, our three months work plan more or less. And what it looks like is very basic functions that you can do as a communication secretary to being setting up your department for success. And the first is an updated contact list for all your church members, active and inactive. So you want every single member that you can trace down. Um, the persons that can assist you with doing this is the communications department. So if it's you and one other person, your church clerk and the deacons and the deaconesses. And you can do this in a variety of ways. Um, you can collect phone numbers right after church. You can post up in existing groups that you might have. You can put a call out on your social media page. But give yourself more or less two months to be able to create this contact list. And you can decide if what you're asking for is just names and phone numbers, or if you're looking for names, phone numbers, physical addresses, or if you're looking for names, phone numbers, email addresses. And that all depends on how you are planning to interact and communicate with these persons. And then there is the creation of the local list of media houses. So your local church is deciding that you are going to have a health fair. But what you are able to do is maybe post out a flyer on some buildings. You tell church members, you're asking them to invite other people. Who are the local media houses or who are the persons in your district, in your community who do coverage for national media houses, for example, Love FM? How do you conduct these people? How do you let them know on Sunday, the 24th of April at 8 a.m. El Shaddai SDA Church, we're going to be having a health fair. These are all the things that are going to be present there. And so by being able to have a contact list of the media houses and meeting these people and talking to them, you'll be able to start to move your church's programming from being localized to just what your membership can bring in to the power of what the community, commun community communication structure can bring in. And when I say create a contact list of media houses, I'm not just going to call these people and get their phone numbers and their email addresses. We're also going to call these people and start making contact to invite them out. Hi, you know, I understand you're the correspondent for my refuge radio in Roaring Creek. Um, I'd like to meet up with you for lunch and talk to you about some of the programs that we're having or I would like to invite you to my church. And you create relationships with these media houses because that builds your ability to have coverage. Um, creation or updating of your, search, your church social media pages for the local church. And this is one of the points where you have to start to ask your members to like the social media pages. That's one of the things I learned um, running the social media page for my local church. A lot of my members don't interact with the social media page. Uh, it is mostly used by persons who have visited one or two times, um, members who are no longer living in Belmopan, but are out of, might be out of Belize or out of district, and they use it to follow updates of the church. So important church information, upcoming meetings and activities that people need to be in person, aren't messages that I would necessarily push through that social media page because majority of my members, my active members, aren't interacting with that page. And that is a little bit because of the age difference and also because the younger, 
young people are interacting with other social media pages that deal with Adventism. So you have to look at that too. Who is the population that's actually using your social media pages? And so what are the effective messages that you're gonna be placing on those spaces? Confirm a calendar of local church activities for at least a quarter and see that it coincides with your mission office calendar. And then promotion of the church's social media pages for local members to like and follow. And you also want to be able to include in that the national pages to like and follow, other national media houses that we have, ATN, Life FM Radio, um, the official channels that provide information for denomination. So what do you need to do this work? Ideally, in an ideal world, you'd have that entire list of things that I have there, um, projector, laptop, one or more web camera, all the connections, uh, high resolution digital camera, your stable access to internet, your printer, your sound system, church bulletin board, um, and then your administrative ac access to all social media accounts. But really and truly, as a communication secretary, very basic things that you would need is a laptop computer that is working, a smartphone that can also double as a digital camera, a stable internet connection, and connecting to a printer from time to time. Never underestimate the power of your church's bulletin board to get messages out. I'm sure you've all been at church. I'm sure you've all seen um, young people and even sometimes older members who are kind of just meandering outside of church, whether they're trying to stay awake or they're trying to avoid service. And eventually they all start to look at the bulletin board because you're looking for something to do. So if you have a bulletin board behind your church that is well up to date, that has attractive flyers, that has upcoming activities. And one of the things that I always stress to department heads at my church is when you are posting up that you are going to have an activity, post up where there is the opportunity for service as well. What do you want members to do at this activity, not just that you're having activity. And you'd be surprised just how that simple bulletin board would get a lot of active, well, a lot of attention and questions for what is coming up and participation from your local membership. So if we look at this slide, we look at our traditional ways of communicating and the traditional formats in which we are used to. So the first one, of course, is our church announcement during our 10 minute section, the church bulletin board, which I talked about earlier. And you might possibly have a phone tree. And if you don't have a phone tree, I would suggest that you create a phone tree because it is something very useful for older members. And what a phone tree looks like is, um, I call Sister Ellen, Sister Ellen will call Brother Nin, Brother Nin will call Sister Maxine, and we will get the information across while we are still building and strengthening community. So a phone tree is just that link of who's contacting who for what reason. And now we have different forms of communication. Uh, WhatsApp groups, and you will notice that your WhatsApp groups will tend to have more persons who are a little bit younger, um, and if it has older members, your older members will tend to be a little bit more silent or they will be the ones who are forwarding information to your WhatsApp group constantly. So there is a need to be able to figure out how we're going to navigate these groups. I personally don't like WhatsApp groups for communication because a lot of communication is dependent on tone, intent, our ability to talk. So while you can send a message in a WhatsApp group or a reminder, it is not an ideal place for a discussion or for people to sign up for an activity. Those things are left better for in-person so that there is less chance of misunderstanding. And then of course, the social media pages that we talked about, um, as most of your congregation working through Facebook and most of them working through YouTube, well, not YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. What are the different social media pages and platforms? And you might find that right now you might only need one or two for your church. And then from there, you start building the others. So you have to look at what are the needs of your church and how are people interacting? What are the pros for having a Facebook page versus having a website per se? What is the needs, the upkeep? And if you don't know all of these things, it's a perfect opportunity to learn. And of course, text reminders that come in from time to time. 